Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Dr. Stephen Quay in this segment, chairman of the board and CEO of Atosa Therapeutics. It's a company focused on preventing breast cancer in at-risk women and treating breast cancer in women of all ages. He's joining us to talk about the development of a drug called z endoxifen for breast cancer treatment, which is currently undergoing three separate phase two clinical trials here in the United States. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Quay. Well, hi. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you are taking the time with us this evening. Tell us a bit about your background and how Etosa came about. Well, sure. So I am a physician scientist, which means I have a, a medical degree, MD, uh, and a PhD in chemistry from the University of Michigan. I uh, taught at Stanford for about a decade um, and then decided to go into, in, into pharmaceutical development. I've invented seven drugs uh, that are FDA approved, have 90 is- issued patents. Atosa Therapeutics, named after Princess Atosa, uh, the first woman in recorded history with breast cancer about 450 B.C. Um, the company was started uh, to develop a, a pap smear for breast cancer and hopefully to prevent breast cancer. Uh, we're now at a point where we found that, it, that the uh, mammogram, the high density on a mammogram, is a nice surrogate for increased risk of cancer. And so we're in a clinical trial to try to prevent breast cancer by treating women who don't have cancer but have high density uh, with Z and oxygen. Um So breast cancer is, is the totality of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, we're a public company on NASDAQ. Our symbol is ATOS. And, you know, breast cancer is probably the largest cancer that we all know about for a couple of reasons. It, number one, it involves about 300,000 women in the U.S. each year. Uh, there's that, For treatment, that means there's over a million women taking treatment after their, their surgery uh, for breast cancer. And because women are the, the network of our, of our society, uh, I think all of us are touched by breast cancer in one form or another. z indoxifen tell us about this compound and how it works. So it has three separate mechanisms of action or, or ways that it works. Um, it doesn't look like estrogen uh, when you put it on a, you know, draw it on a chalkboard or something, but when it gets to the body, when it gets to the estrogen receptor, it fits in the spot where estrogen should fit very, very well. So it blocks estrogen from binding to the estrogen receptor. That's the driver of about 80% of breast cancers. It also, when it gets in that estrogen receptor uh, cleft to where it sits, causes the receptor to be degraded. So the women actually lose their their receptor. And then at high uh, high levels, it blocks a uh, oncogene product called PKC beta. Um, So those three mechanisms of action combine to basically take a breast cancer that's growing rapidly and stop it from growing. So how does that fit into the overall treatment landscape? So if you think about breast cancer as a continuum, you can go from women at risk of breast cancer and try to prevent it. You can go in the period of time between the diagnosis and the definitive treatment, which is now surgery and sometimes radiation, called the neoadjuvant phase. Um, and then you, you, can, you can focus on the two to five year period after surgery, uh, the adjuvant phase, where you're trying to do two things. You're trying to prevent recurrence in the breast that had the cancer. And because women have breast cancer once are more likely to have it a second time, you're trying to prevent a second tumor. So we have programs in each of those three areas, prevention, neoadjuvant, and treatment, uh, which make us quite unique um, in the breast cancer space. I believe the, the only company that's focusing on the entire continuum of breast cancer. So what's the, the current standard of treatment? How is this vastly different? Uh, current standard? Um, is a woman either identifies cancer herself mm-hmm. by a physical exam. Uh, you know, we recommend once a month a woman uh, do a self-exam, perhaps in the shower, or she has a clinical exam by a physician who identifies a lump or by mammography. So starting at 40, every two years, women are to have uh, a mammogram. And cancers grow so rapidly that they sort of die, and they, and they form little crystals of calcium phosphate, which are the things that are detected on mammography. So three ways to get to the beginning of the diagnosis of breast cancer. And then a needle is put into the lesion uh, that's seen on mammography, sent to the pathology department, put under the microscope, um, and it's, it's then diagnosed as normal, atypical hyperplasia, what's called ductal carcinoma in situ, which is cancer, but it hasn't uh, broken through the, 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 uh, the fence at the bottom 
uh, of the epithelium in the breast or invasive breast cancer. So those are the, the three categories. And then it's characterized as to what's driving it. So is it being driven by estrogen, by progesterone, by a protein called HER2? So our focus now in our development uh, is on in ER positive or estrogen receptor positive breast cancers. We have a program at Weill Cornell in the research phase for triple negative, which means it doesn't have any of those three drivers, triple negative breast cancer, uh, which is which is really a whole separate disease. About 40,000 women a year have that, typically young, typically African-American, and has a very poor five-year survival. So we're, we're excited about being addressed uh, being able to address that that unmet need, but that's the landscape of what's going on currently. I mentioned that Z and was currently involved in three separate phase two trials. Could you give us a brief overview of each of these clinical trials that Z and is currently being evaluated in? Absolutely. So the first is in the prevention of breast cancer. It's in a trial uh, in Stockholm, Sweden, in t- called the Charisma Study. And what the uh, clinical design of the study is 240 women uh, who do not have breast cancer. They can't have it at entry, uh, but have high density. So their mammograms are whiter. Uh, the background is whiter on, uh, on the mammogram than is typical. Um, and, and this background density has been shown to be about an eightfold risk factor for future breast cancer, and it's changeable. You can change it with diet, you can change it with exercise, and you can change it with endoxin, we believe. So the trial is 120 women on a sugar pill, placebo, 120 women on c endoxin for six months. Mm-hmm. And they get a mammogram at baseline, they get a mammogram at three months, they get a mammogram at six months. Uh, that trial should, the last of the 240 women should enter that trial before Christmas this year, which means she'll be on the drug for six months, which means by June or July, we should be able to break the code and see if the density is reduced. Our target is to uh, reduce the density statistically and then reduce it clinically, which is probably a 5 to 10% reduction in density over the six months. Then we look at durability. Does the density remain low uh, for up to 24 months? The second trial is the Evangeline trial. These are premenopausal women who have just been diagnosed, and we're treating the period between diagnosis and treatment called the neoadjuvant period. Uh, this is being run out of the Mayo Clinic. The endpoints are after six months of treatment are KI-67, a measure of cell growth, the uh, reduction in density or reduction in size of the cancer, and then what we find at, at surgery. And the finally is an iSPY trial with the same design in neoadjuvant, but looking at both pre- and postmenopausal women. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for our listeners? And then give us a website where we can learn more about Atosa Therapeutics. Our long-term vision is to have data readouts from all three parts of these trials over the next 9 to 18 months. We expect this will uh, transform Atosa Therapeutics because Phase 2 data, having patents, and having an agreement from the FDA on Phase 3 are exactly the parameters that you need to have in order to uh, partner with a large pharmaceutical company for our product. With, With that said, I mean, I think that it's very important that we do things to prevent breast cancer. Uh, We're in a very uh, difficult time now, every minute during this presentation. So we've had 10 breast cancer diagnoses during this talk. We'd like to stop that. Atosa Therapeutics, ATOS on NASDAQ. Our website is uh, www.atosainc.com. Stephen, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, and hopefully you'll come back and give us some updates as these trials continue. That would really be good. We should, we should get back together in uh, three to six months. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Stephen Quay. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 